Hey guys, GregGamer34 here. As you can tell by today's intro, I have made a CPU. Now I also happen to be inside the control room for that CPU. And I'm going to demonstrate a program, and I'm going to have another program written for it in an upcoming video. And um, yeah, the, the world which it's in will be up for download. So yeah. So now let's get to it. These uh, levers, everything is labeled here. <coughs> So I'll go over what each one does now. So this is uh, enable branch to update the PC. So if you want to say branch to line 16, we'll enable the branch. But it's, you notice it's, um, I should probably explain this over here. This is the actual the PC output, so it'll tell you what line it's on. Um, so since it didn't update, we have to clock it. You can either manually clock it, or you can start the clock to do it. <clears throat> but that's the only way to get it to go. So. Now let's say we want to get it back at line 0 because you can see it's at line 16. All we have to do is enable the branch to update the PC. Don't enter any data. And clock it. And you'll see that light will turn off up there. So that's that. Now our clock commands are enable clock. Now you have to enable the clock to be able to start it. So once you start the clock, you'll see that this is going to start going through. Now, if you want to just turn it off, you just flick that off and you'll notice that this doesn't come through anymore. So we'll get this clock started again. And you'll notice these repeaters on over here. Now, this was running at 14 ticks, but for some reason it started derping, so I made it 15 ticks. So this is uh, a little bit slower than uh, 1 hertz CPU. 1 hertz CPU would be 10 ticks, so this is a uh, five ticks slower. Um, so if you want to, this is the fastest clock it could be at right now for this program. I'm not sure about others yet, I guess we'll see. Um, and I'll show you what the program is in a second. <clears throat> but if you wanted to add delay, you can add delay to these repeaters. And that would just slow it down. So if you were trying to debug or you're trying to do something else. So that's how you can manually control the clock. Now this up here is an important thing. Sometimes you might need to reset all the data in the register um, if you're running a new program. So I'm just going to go ahead and click that now before I run the next program. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead and enable the clock output. So as soon as I click this, this pulse going through here will actually start heading to the PC. The moment I do that, the PC starts getting updated, and you're going to see values popping up on the screen. Now, I'll let this run for a little bit and let you guys figure out what it's running. It should be pretty simple. Um, we can take a look at the PC, too. I'll have the PC over here. So have you figured it out yet? 13, 21... 34. The BCD is just a little derpy right now. I mean, it displays right, but it's getting pulsed really quick. 55, 89, 144, 233. And the rest of the values don't work because they're overflows. So that's what this thing just did. It just counted up like that. But what were those stream and numbers? That was actually the Fibonacci sequence. And that ran it really damn fast. The whole sequence took, what, 45, 50 seconds of real time? So, yeah, it's, it's, I'd say that's pretty fast compared to my other ones, which would take, you know, a minute and a half to run it. So, so yeah, because this is twice as fast as my other CPU that was able to run Fibonacci uh, that's got 5,000 views on YouTube already. You know, this is twice as fast as this, and it's, what, it's eight months since that? So quite an improvement. Um, so yeah, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to enable branch, have no branch data, and allow the clock output. And that'll just keep it branching to line zero. So we just go ahead and remove that. We'll turn off all these controls. And don't forget to reset your registers. So yeah, now let's go look at it. OK, so this is directly outside here. And this is where all the clock commands are. So if you see here, these are our repeaters in here that were used for delaying the clock. And here's the actual clock. 
Um, so I'm not really going to go over how the clock works. I mean, it's pretty simple, so you should be able to figure it out. Uh, monostable and going into the clock and then being able to either stop the clock or allow the clock output here. <clears throat> yeah, stuff like that. So now, we'll start with this. We'll start with the ROM. So we'll go over the ROM. The orange is the 4-bit opcode. The blue is a 6-bit immediate. The red is a 3-bit write. The yellow is uh, read B. And the green is read A, if I recall correctly. And now to actually look here, green is read A, yellow is read B, uh, red is write, and orange is opcode, and then blue, of course, is immediate. Now, my instructions include add, subtract, or, nor, and, nand, xor, xnor, as ALU functions, along with shift. And then I have my jumping options, which is branch of equal to and branch of greater than. Then I have my other branching option, which is branch of shift under flow. Then I have my RAM ops, which is load word for memory and store word to memory. And then I have my two, uh, two other very important ops. I have my user interface op, and I have my compare op. Now, if I were, wanted to do a branch, um, which happens to be... Um, uh, if I wanted to do either the number 9 or the number 10 for a branch, uh, so that's branch of equal to or branch of greater than, then I'd have to first have compare. I'd have to compare the two numbers first. So in my compare instruction, so I'd have to give the CPU the number 15 in the opcode, and then compare two registers against each other. And that's all you need to input for the compare. And when you do that, it'll update the flags register. So then when you run branch of equal to or branch of greater than, depending on which one you run, it'll check to see if that flag was true. If the flag was true, it'll then branch. If it wasn't true, then it'll just go to the next line. So that's how you do that. Um, the purpose of doing that is to actually dramatically speed up my clock. I used to have it so I wouldn't need the compare cycle, and my clock speed was 40 ticks. Now I'm running a 15 tick clock. As you can see, that's a huge import performance. Also, I have the op branch of shift underflow. This one does not require the compare flag, and it will only branch if a shift underflow occurs. So you A, have to give it a, either register, it doesn't matter. Um, and then B, you have to tell it where to go in the immediate. As you can see here, the immediate is an address, ADDR stands for address. My load word for memory and store word for memory, those are my RAM ops. Load word will take a register argument, or no, Load word, yeah, load word will take a register argument and uh, an and a immediate, and what it'll do is it'll load the RAM, da the data from RAM at the immediate that you entered. So if you give it the number, it's only I only have five bits of addressing for RAM. So if you give it the number 16, it'll go to the 16th byte of RAM and load it. The reason you give it a register argument is where to save it from RAM. So if you give it the register argument three in the red here. You, it'll save whatever is in location 16 in RAM to location 3 in registers. The opposite is true for store word to memory. Store word to memory, you can either load A or B register, doesn't matter, and give it an uh, address in your, op, in your uh, immediates, and it'll then take the output and of a register and then store that to a RAM location. Then of course my other opcode, which I haven't gone over really, is my user interface. My user interface is done by giving it an address here. It's only a two-bit address now, so only these two. Um, it's either I only have two UIs hooked up, so that's one or two, not three. Um, and that's that'll just load when you run the UI uh, option. It'll just load from the user input, and you have to pick a register where you want it to save to. So you can use any seven registers that you want. And the UI isn't hooked up yet on this model, but it will be on the downloadable model. Downloadable model. My bad. Now, here's the out. You'll see the output of the user input comes right here, comes up underneath, comes right down here, and it actually comes to here. I just have the buses right into my immediates here, which I haven't gotten around to yet because I keep forgetting to. And that's it. So now, <clears throat> what else does this thing do? Well, the reason I 
I was having such issues getting this to run as fast as it does is because of my branching. My branching, it, it would happen too fast. It would get the data before it could actually branch. So I solved this issue by doing this little timing RSR. So if you notice when I flip this lever and turn it back up again, um, I'm still going to be getting power to this, even though I turn it off. See, I'm still getting power to this, even though I turn that off. This is a timed RS nor latch, basically. So after one, two, three, or after this many ticks on these, um, it'll then stop letting power go through. That's how my branch works, so it gets branch data long enough to actually update the PC. Of course, the blue is the decoder here. Everything is color-coded except for one thing, which I kind of forgot the color code, which happens to be this decoder right here. Uh, not a big deal, though. I mean, this decoder isn't super important, it's just off codes. Um, you can see the ops right here that it does. I wrote sub on all of these. Oh, that's because I stacked it. Okay, these do not all sub. Uh, oh well. Um, blue is the decoder. This is obviously RAM. Underneath here I have all my instruction decoding. Um, red is RAM. Green is ALU. Yellow here is a register. Um, yellow over there is a PC also because the PC is a, similar to a register because it updates values and can get values stored to it. So this is a register also. Um, yeah, I have 31 bytes of RAM. So that's a 5-bit address of RAM. Uh, not including a zero a zeroth RAM location. And the RAM speed is only 4 ticks to get to uh, this repeater right here. It's only 4 ticks. 4 ticks write, 4 ticks read. That's pretty fast for RAM. So then it takes another 1, 2, uh, 3, 4 ticks. It takes another 8 ticks to get through and back to the registers. So it can do that all on a clock cycle because my clock cycle is 14 ticks. So it has plenty of time to do what it needs to do. Um. And yeah, this is basically it. Now, for the major part, which I'd like to show you guys, this back here. This back here is a pretty magnificent magnificent thing. Wow, well, I can't talk today. This is actually called a BCD decoder. This is not from anybody's on the server. I actually found this on Planet Minecraft a while back. Now, the guy who designed this is really genius, if you ask me. It's more compact than Neo Master's parallel BCD. Um, of course, Neo Master Serial's BCD beats this by a long shot, but I didn't want to have to mess with anything serial. So this is uh, synced. That's what these repeaters here are syncing. Um, actually, speaking of syncing, um, some are only on one tick when they need to be on two. Okay. That should help sync that a little bit. Um, yeah, so basically what this does is it takes in your 8-bit number here. Um, this is the 8th bit right here and then calculates what the number should actually be displayed uh, when you can only display the digits 0 through 9 on the screen. Now what's also cool about this is normally in a BCD you have leading zeros. So if let's say you were to have the number 910, it would display the number 910. Let's say you were to have just the number 10, it would display the number 010. Well, in this, it'll only display this 10 instead of the 010. There's some uh, Logic's set up here, which is what these compared is for, to uh, get rid of leading zeros. I just want to mention that that logic was set up by Shadekiller, um, really awesome guy. And I also had a different screen set up on here, um, as in terms of it was only just a basic seven segment display with a non, where everything but the seven segment display was a different color. Um, and people said the visible visibility of that was really low. So a guy named Entweed actually helped me design, or he gave me this design for a 7 seg, which will only light up the lamps that it wants now, because what normally happens when you power into your lamps is it turns on all of them like that, but when you actually do it like this, you can't see, but the way it works is it only powers up those lamps right there. So he came up with this and I'm using that now. Also, my binary output is right underneath right here. So yeah, this is basically it. This is programmed around Fibonacci right now, and the download will include the Fibonacci ROM. Um, I'll have another video out where you could download the CPU with multiplication programs on it, 
still working that out, but I hope to have be able to do a 4-bit multiplication in, I don't know, 4 cycles, 4 loops, so, whatever, 15 times 4 is, uh, 60, 60 ticks times 4, yeah, that's, that shouldn't be too long, compared to my other CPU that would take, um, say, 8 minutes to calculate 15 times 15, uh, which is a little ridiculous, so yeah, this one's a huge, you know, performance boost. And note, that's right, this is not pipelined by any chance. This thing is able to achieve speeds like this just because of uh, syncing and being careful when you build things to sync it properly. Um, so yeah, this is basically an unbuffered pipeline. Uh, not not really though, because I mean it's not a perfect, an unbuffered pipeline would be able to run at the same data loop, even though my data loop in this is 13 ticks and the clock is running at 15. So uh, definitions are a little fuzzy, but it runs, it works, it's awesome. Um, if you're not subscribed, please do. It helps me out a lot. Also, don't forget to like, share, uh, the vi like and share the video. You know, it helps me out. Hoping to get a thousand views on this. You know, that'd be pretty awesome. A thousand views in a couple weeks. I'd be pretty nice with that. So thanks for watching. And see you guys next time.